Hi, I'm Jamie Brakus, and welcome to the first episode of Fit and Delicious. Join us as we break down misconceptions about fitness, food, and living your best life at any age. Today, I will not let age change me, I'll change the way I age. We begin with a morning muscle makeover. Then, Chef Danny Spees has an energy bar recipe to get you ready for the day. Next, it's time for a little exercise and wall exercises, plus our first special tip from the past with our mentor, Jack LaLanne. His words ring true even now. We finish up with another recipe from Chef Danny in a turkey zucchini skillet, all today on Fit and Delicious. Hi, I'm Jamie Brinkus. Welcome to the first episode of Fit and Delicious. Each week, we'll be guiding you on the path to a healthy lifestyle with me, Jamie Brinkus, Chef Danny Spees, and our mentor, Jack LaLanne, and words of wisdom from the past. Today's mantra is, I will not let age change me, I will change the way I age. Just that simple statement and repeating it to yourself is how we begin our series. Get ready to adjust your thoughts on the healthy way to be fit at every age. Coming up first is starting your day right with a morning muscle makeover. Any day that you can move and get up, well that's a good day. But let's make the mornings even better. The first thing I'd like you to do when you wake up is to do some stretches in bed. It doesn't take long to get the blood flowing after a sound sleep and you'll feel so much better after you do a few of these movements. Okay. Let's get on the ground here, guys. What I want you to do first is knees to the chest, okay? So bring both knees into the chest. Never hold your breath, breathe. That's it. Breathe and then release. This feels so good, let's do it again. Knees into the chest, hold it. That's it. Never hold your breath. Breathe, breathe, breathe. And then release. Good, guys. Now. Crisscross the arms right here. Boom, right there. That's it. You want to get that oxygen flowing, the blood flowing, especially in the morning. You had a sound sleep. You're going to feel great after this. Trust me. There you go. Nice and easy. And release. Now from there, we do a hamstring pull slowly. Bring the leg back. Now it's a gentle move, right? We're not jarring the joints. We're not pulling we're just gently gently stretching this out hold it right there hold it not too far back and then release other side now again nice and easy you're going to bring it right here you're going to hold it now you can dictate the challenge that you want okay but gently pull back hold it hold it and then release okay now bring both arms behind you and bring them up to your side, right there. That's it. Now again, you're getting that synovial fluid going in the joints. This feels good. Especially if you have some shoulder problems. This is great in the morning. Stretch it out, get the blood moving. There you go. Nice and easy. And release. Okay, now, one leg is out. Twist one leg over. Try to keep your shoulders on the ground, right here. Hold it. That's it. You're feeling that stretch in the back. Well, this feels really good in the lower back. And then release. Other side, nice and easy, slow. Again, try to keep your shoulders on the ground as much as you can. Hold it right there. That's it. And then release. Now from there, what I want you to do is bicycles, right? So all I want you to do is bring your legs out, out, out. Now, if you have a sore back, you may want to put your hands on your buns right there. That's it. Again, this is for the hip flexors, gets those legs moving, the quadriceps, the hamstrings. That's it. Nice and easy. And then release. Now, from there, we're just going to do what I call a partial crunch. So all you want to do is bring your shoulders off the ground about 30 degrees right there. If you want, you can put your hands here. 
Just kind of warming up the uh, rectus abdominis, the abs, right there. That's it. Nice and easy. Slow, slow, controlled. That's it. Two more. This feels good. And release. Now, these are called windshields right here. It's like a windshield wiper. That's it. Knees together, side to side. Well, it feels good on your back. It's a great exercise for you guys. Nice and easy. That's it. A couple more. And release. Good. Now, from there, guys, I want you to do a rack stretch. Arms out, legs out, all the way. Hold it. Nice, big, deep breath. Hold it right there. Well, that's it. Well, this feels good. Bring those knees into the chest again. Hold it right there. You're really starting to warm up and wake up. And then release. That's it. Nice and easy right there. And then bring it up. Now, slowly bring it up. Now, this is a great exercise for your lower back, especially after you've slept all night. This is called a swimmer. My right arm goes up. Okay, my right arm and left leg. Okay, so it's just opposite arm, opposite leg. You just keep doing that's for the extensors, your lower back. We'll hold it right there. That's it. You want to do about 10, 12 of these. Really works that lower back muscle. Nice and easy. That's it. A couple more. And Release. Okay, guys, now from there, slowly, slowly, I want you to get right on your back right here. Now, do a cat stretch. You're here and up. Here and then up. Now, you can really feel these. Nice and easy. That's it. Just rounding that back right there. That's it. Good. Hold it. Hold it. One more. And then release. Now just slowly bend back, hold that stretch. We can really feel this on your lower back. Feels good, especially in the morning. That's it. All right, guys, now I want to bring it up. And then we're going to do what we call a hurdler stretch. So bring one leg out in front and slowly, gently try to touch the toes. You feel this in the lower back and those hamstring muscles. It's perfect. Pull it right there and then release. Other side. Gently bring it out. Hey, guess what? If you can't touch your toes, you just put your hands here and pull yourself in. That's okay. All right, nice and easy. You feel that stretch. Bring it here, both knees out. Hold it right there. That's it. Nice and easy. And release, okay? Last thing I want you to do here. Stretch it out, so right leg is out, left leg pretzeled over, hold it. All right, guys, now we're gonna go right from there. It's what I call sort of a Russian twist, okay? So you just wanna twist to the left, twist to the right. Again, we're stretching out that lower back. That's it. Waking up this morning. Now you do these exercises every day, oh, you feel like a million bucks, trust me. That's it, a couple more, nice and easy. And release, okay, guys, now slowly, you're going to bring it up right on your knees here, okay? Now you bring one arm across the body like this. Hold it. That's it. And really stretch. Nice and easy. All the way up. Hold it. And release. Other side. Slow. Boy, you can feel that right through here, especially when you wake up, guys. But now that your shoulders are all nice and loose, that's it. Well, smile in the morning. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And release. Now, round the back. Kind of clasp your hands right here. Round it. And then bring it back. Shoulders back. Shrug the shoulders. That's it. There you go. From here, left, right, left, right. Nice and easy. Working those obliques, the sides. That's it. One more, and release. Now, a couple nice big deep breaths all the way up. What I like to call vitality stretches. That's right. 
Bring it up, hold it, clasp the hands right here. Hold, hold, hold. And release. That's it, guys. Your morning muscle makeover. Well done. Hello, my friends. It's Danny, and today I'm showing you how to make my no bake energy balls. This is a very tasty, easy recipe to make that is perfect when you want a little something sweet in the morning or the afternoon. They also make a great pre or post workout snack and they even work for breakfast when you're in a pinch. Also, if you have any little ones at home, this is the perfect recipe to get them in the kitchen because there's no knives, no baking, no cooking. It's just dump, stir and roll. So into a nice big bowl, I'm going to combine one cup of old fashioned rolled oats. Oatmeal is an ingredient that I recommend buying organic whenever possible. You could get away with quick oats if that's what you have, but steel cut oats will not work for this recipe. Then I have a half a cup of ground up flax seeds. This is a great plant based source of omega three fatty acids. A half a cup of all natural peanut butter. Now make sure that the only ingredient listed are peanuts and maybe some salt if you like salted peanut butter, which I'm using here today. It's also much easier to work with when it's at room temperature. So that's a little note to keep in your back pocket. And of course, if you don't have peanut butter, you could use any nut or seed butter that you have on hand or that you prefer. Then I have one third cup of honey, which could also be maple syrup or really any type of liquid sweetener that you like to use a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then a half a cup of mini chocolate chips. Then all I have to do is mix this all together. You just want to get everything really well combined until you have a nice thick batter like I have here. And you're going to see that when you pinch it between your fingers, it sticks together. Then from here, I'm just going to form them into little bite sized energy balls. So what I do is I grab a small rimmed baking sheet. You don't need to spray it down or anything. They're not going to stick and scoop up about a teaspoon of the dough. I just drop it into my palm, squish it together a bit and then roll it just like I would roll a meatball. So that's what it's going to look like when it's done. It's going to be a little bit smaller than a golf ball. You're going to end up with anywhere between 16 to 20 energy balls. So I'm just going to place that on the baking sheet and continue till I've worked through all of the dough. Now, what I like to do from here is just pop them in the fridge, let them chill and set up. They just store better once they're cold. You just need to leave them in there for about an hour or so. And then I transfer them into an airtight container where they will happily live in the fridge for weeks. And if you wanted to make them go the long haul, you could also store them in the freezer. What I love so much about these energy balls is they're like granola bars, but bite size and made from scratch with love. I can't wait for you to give the recipe a try. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Danny Spees and I'll see you back here next time. Cheers. I'll tell you what today is guys, you got a wall, well, I've got a workout for you. What I need you to do is have a chair for some balance and guess what you have to do? Get off your seat and get on your feet. Let's go. First exercise is the push up. All right, so what I want you to do is put your hands on the wall like this and just bring it straight down, right there. Boom, that's it, right there. This works your abs, your chest, your shoulders, and those tricep muscles. Nice and easy, right there. That's it. You can challenge yourself, guys, by going a lot slower, okay? or you want to hold at the bottom, then you're challenging yourself. Because if you don't challenge, you don't change. That's it. One more and release. Now we want to work the shoulders. So step back just a little. Okay. Now bring the arms up here and now you're doing a shoulder press back here. Boom. Right there. See a little different delineation of the muscle group right there. That's it. Good. Now you can feel that a little more in the shoulders instead of the chest. That's it. Nice and easy. Keep your tummy nice and tight. Zip it up. That's it. There you go. A couple more. And release. Now, guys, this is where we're going to have the chair. This is a leg press. So what you want to do is have one hand here. Now put one foot up. And what you want to do is gently bring it in and then back out for a leg press. In and back out. This works the quadriceps, the hamstrings, and that gluteus maximus. That's right. We're minimizing the maximus. <laughs> That's it. Nice and easy. I mean, who doesn't want a firmer, uplifted, rounded appearance in the buns, right? That's it. 
nice and easy, couple more, and release. Okay, hey, let's go the other side, right? So all you do is put one foot up, and if you're just starting out, you can put your foot down and bring it down and up. That's it. There you go. Hey, all I want you to do though is make sure you don't put uh, two feet on the wall and try to do this, <laughs> all right? So there you go, nice and easy. You can really feel this. That's it. Slow and controlled. There you go. A couple more. Three, two, one more, guys, and release. Now, we're going to work the tricep muscle. So, opposite arm here, okay? So, if my right arm is on the, on the wall, you're going to bring it down and back up. Now, this works the back of the arm right here. You can actually see the muscle work as I push away the wall right there. That's it. Well, you can really feel these. There you go. Nice and easy. You know, no one's perfect, guys. You know, love yourself as you are and just train hard and become the best that you want to be, guys. One more. And release. Of course, you go to the other side. Now, a little different version is tricep go higher on the wall. Here, bring it down and back up. Down and back up. And you can actually see the muscle being worked. Down and back up. That's it. Keep your tummy nice and tight. There you go. Three, two, and one. Good, guys. Now, what I want you to do is a little ab exercise, right? Put your back against the wall. Now, you're going to do elbows opposite knee. So it's here. Boom. Boom. Right there. Right elbow goes to the left knee, left elbow to the right. Keep the tummy nice and tight. Give you a slimmer, trimmer, tighter waistline, guys. That's it. Perfect. Now, you only do maybe 20, 30 seconds of these. Build yourself into the plan. That's it. But you're using the wall. That's all it is, guys. That's all it is. Okay, so now what I want you to do is a one-legged lunge. So here's your chair. You bring your legs out, put one foot on the wall, and then gently just bring it down. Bring it down. This works the quadricep, the hamstring, and again, that gluteus maximus muscle right back here, guys. There you go. That's it. One more. And release. Switch legs. There you go. Nice and easy. You know, it's funny though, the, the hardest part about exercising is starting, right? But then if you exercise regularly, the hardest part is stopping, right? It becomes a way of life. And that's what we want from you guys at Fit and Delicious. A couple more. Not too deep on these, okay? Make sure the knee and the toe is lined up. And release. All right. Now with the right side, this is a hamstring curl. You're going to be right here. Now just bring the leg up and then back down. Follow your foot right up to your buns area. This works the hamstring right through here. That's it. Nice and easy. Keep your tummy nice and tight. Again, the chair for balance and release. All right, other side right here. Just follow the wall with your foot. Now this works the back of your thighs, those hamstrings. One more and release. Now my favorite, the squats on the wall. You're right here. Bring it down. Just put your buns on the wall. This works the hips, the buns, the thighs. All right, guys? And now what I want you to do is hold it right there. Hold it. That's all you want to do. And what you're doing is you're, you have an isometric for your quads, your hamstrings, and your buns, guys. All right, you're doing great. Well done, guys. Now, you know, my fitness mentor, Jack LaLanne, is still relevant today as he was in the past. Now, let's look at what Jack did for his abs years ago. Take a look. Listen. Put your hands up here and try and touch this knee to this elbow. Ready? Like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, up, two, twist. Two, three, four. Get the knee up higher. One, two, three, four. One, two, and rest. One, two. Very good. Hello my friends, it's Danny, and today I have a super simple weeknight meal for you. I'm gonna show you how to make my turkey and zucchini skillet. You are gonna wanna try this. 
at least I'm gonna wanna try it. Now this is the time of year when we're all getting back to schedules and routines, and it's really important to have a few super easy, delicious, nutritious weeknight meals in your back pocket. And what I like about this one is it's super flexible, so you don't have to follow the recipe verbatim, and I'll give you options as we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is chop up some onions and some garlic to get in the pan to get the recipe started. So what you need is one yellow onion, you could also use a red onion, they would both work, and a few cloves of chopped garlic. Now the easiest way I find to chop an onion is you just wanna cut off the stem end of the onion, just a nice slim, thin slice off the top, then lay it down with the flat side down, cut it in half, then peel off this outer papery skin, it's usually one or two layers right on the outside, and then you just want to create like a tic-tac-toe board, right? So I lay my onion down, I go in with horizontal slices, and then you come back over the top with some vertical slices. And then once you've got that done, you just take the knife over the top and slice straight down, and you've got a chopped onion. That is the easiest way to approach your onion. Then for the garlic, all you're going to do is pull off the papery outer skin, lay my knife over the top and give it a good little whack, and you'll see that will bust the outer uh, skin of the garlic open and makes it really easy to peel. Then from here, you just lay your garlic down and chop it up. You can move your knife in different directions to get it nice and fine. And I usually like to do about four to five cloves of garlic for this recipe, but you can certainly scale that up or down depending on your personal preference. Then other than your onion and garlic, the only other thing that you need to prep is your zucchini. So I have four small to medium sized zucchini. If they were really big, three would be plenty. And all I do with this is I'm gonna trim off the top and the bottom, and then I slice it in half lengthwise and then I do that again on each half. So basically, you're slicing the zucchini into quarters, and then you just lay it down, flat side down, and chop. So you're gonna have like little zucchini bites, little bite-sized pieces of zucchini, just like this. Then once you've done that little bit of prep work, you're ready to bring it over to the stove and get cooking. So to get started, I've got a large nonstick pan that I'm gonna heat over a medium heat, medium high heat, and you want a 12 to 13 inch pan, so you have a good amount of size in the pan. Then once the pan has heated up, I'm gonna just get about a tablespoon of olive oil into the pan. Once that heats up, we're ready for the onions and the garlic. So you get the onions in the pan. As Soon as you hear that sizzle, that will always be your indicator that your oil is hot enough and ready to go, your pan is ready. So get the onions along with my garlic. Give that a pinch of salt, that's gonna help pull the liquid out, get everything sauteing, and just let this go for a couple of minutes. Really what we're looking for is for them to get nice and fragrant and for the onions to begin to turn translucent. So once you've got your onion and garlic right where you want them, just like what I have here, you're just gonna push all of those veggies over to one side of the pan, and now we're ready for our meat. Now what I'm using today is one pound of regular ground turkey. Um, you could certainly do a lean ground turkey, but that's definitely gonna be a little bit drier. Um, but you could also do a ground bison, you could do a ground beef. Really use what you have or use what you love. So get the meat into the pan. I'm gonna season that again with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, and then using a wooden spoon Bachelor, I'm just gonna start to break this up because what we want is to create little crumbles in the pan. So you just break it up, let it set a bit, work it in there some more, and once you start to see that you're losing that pink color, then what I do is I just start to mix the whole pan together. So I incorporate the turkey with the onions and the garlic, and this is gonna continue cooking. So ultimately, we want all of the pink out of the turkey, which it will be by the time we're done cooking, and the onions and the garlic are nice and translucent, super fragrant, and that's how you know you're ready for the next step. So now I'm ready for that zucchini that we chopped up earlier. I'm just gonna transfer that into the pan. You're gonna see that the pan is gonna become nice and full. Let's give that some seasoning. So I've got a big heaping tablespoon of Italian seasoning. Personally, I love buying um, seasoning mixes like this one. This way you don't have to buy every single individual spice that they have at the grocery store, right? An Italian mix like this has a mixture of parsley and basil and sage and thyme and rosemary. So you're getting all that in one bottle. So get that into the pan with another layer of salt and some black pepper. And then I'm adding in two 15 ounce cans of diced tomatoes. If you had a lot of fresh tomatoes, guys, you could use three or four cups of fresh chopped tomatoes here as well. Now, you may be thinking right now that it looks like it could use a little bit more liquid, but what you wanna remember is that zucchini holds a lot of liquid. So as it starts to simmer, it's gonna release that into the pan, and we're gonna have more than enough liquid. So resist the temptation to add more. 
Another thing I would recommend, if you had it, you could pop a lid on at this point. I do not have a lid for this pan. Um, the only difference is, is this is gonna take a little bit longer to cook. The lid will help to speed that up a bit, okay? So guys, really here, what we're looking for is 15 to 30 minutes of simmering time. And really, it's just gonna depend on how you like your zucchini cooked. I like it a little more al dente, so I tend to pull it off after about 15, 20 minutes. If you like it a little bit softer, then just let it go for the whole half hour. You see what I mean here, guys? All the liquid that's re releasing from the zucchini, it's just perfect. Now, what I love about a meal like this is that we're getting a whole lot of veggies with a little bit of meat worked into the dish, so it's super satisfying. Plus, this pot is very versatile. You literally could use whatever type of meat you had on hand. You could swap out the veggies. You could use fresh tomatoes, um, canned tomatoes like I used. Really, what you wanna do is make it work for you. Once your meat is cooked through and you've got your zucchini right where you want it, what I like to do is I shut the heat off and then I finish this off with some grated Parmesan cheese. Again, completely optional, but I love the way it just brings the whole dish together. And then I've got a big handful of fresh chopped basil. It happens to be pouring out of my garden right now, so I figured why not right over the top. And then I'm gonna show you how I like to serve this up. Now, you could certainly eat this as is, maybe with some uh, sourdough bread on the side or something like that to turn it into a main family meal, or you can do what I love to do and serve it over some spaghetti squash. It's absolutely delicious and it's a great way to sneak another veggie onto the plate. And for all of my meal preppers out there, this is also a great dish to make on the weekend and then you can store it in little individual servings to have for lunch throughout the week. So many options. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think of this dish. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I love this meal. It's so simple, so easy, so delicious. Thanks so much for watching, my friends. I'm Danny Spees, and I will see you back here next time. Cheers. So remember, I will not let age change me. I am changing the way I age one day at a time. And there's that all important word, time. Who has enough time? We'll give you some strategies next on Fit and Delicious. For videos, tips, and the 8-day challenge, visit fitanddelicious.com. To become a Fit and Delicious member, where you'll find over 90 videos, tips, and inspiration, plus all 13 episodes of Fit and Delicious, go to fitanddelicious.com. This is episode 101.